Yo, what's up? Welcome back. Happy Monday. Before we get into today's video, I just would like to let you know, if you don't already, that we are launching our first playing card bicycle rider back collaboration. We've collaborated with uh, the United States Playing Card Company and Bicycle Playing Cards to revisit the iconic rider backs. These cards have been around for 100, almost 150 years, so they're iconic. They're recognizable. They are just a staple in playing card history. We've collaborated with them. In fact, the only other company that's manipulated or the only other entity that's manipulated the back design in the last 150 years has been NASA like 50 years ago. And so we are very honored uh, to bring this collaboration to life. They will be available on Wednesday, limited quantities only as soon as those sell out you've missed out. So there you go. Check those out at first dot shop. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about a magician, a mentalist, a showman. This man has captivated audiences over in the UK for maybe even two decades. Not so famous in the Western world, not as famous, but definitely had his own Netflix show as well. Uh, Darren Brown. Darren Brown is possibly my biggest inspiration in magic. I remember watching his specials. It's kind of like asking a musician who their favorite guitarist is. You're not going to hear your typical names. You'll hear the guitarist that the guitarists love. And I think for magicians, that is Darren Brown. He's the magician's magician. Uh, the books he's put out, the effects he's done, everything that this man touches just turns to gold. It is such a joy to watch him perform. I've got to see him live, which was fantastic when he was doing his off-Broadway show in New York. But Darren Brown is an absolute living legend. If you don't know anything about Darren Brown, I highly encourage you to at least go check out his YouTube channel. He literally live streams 24-7 all of his specials and he has some crazy specials out there and i'll let you check that out but what we're going to be checking out today is some of his earlier work and some of the work he did before he was like mainstream television which was magic for magicians he put out a project called the devil's picture book this came with a bunch of effects that were original to him. And then he then taught, this is on VHS. And we're not gonna look at how these tricks are done. If you wanna look at how they're done, you can find that out or figure that out yourself. Uh, we're gonna just look at the performances that he has. So these are old VHS performances of Darren Brown, but they are part of what inspired me to become a magician. So I hope it does the same for you. Like, smash, subscribe. The misdirection in this is so great. Very pleased to meet you, Jack. Is that right? Yeah. Jack Hi. and Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. Fantastic. Jack, would you uh, would you pick a card for me? I will stand up so you can okay. see me even more clearly. Tip a card for me. And I'd be kind enough oh. to show Cam. And you can even show the uh, lovely ladies. Uh, ten of diamonds. Fantastic. Nine of diamonds. So do remember what the card yeah. is. All okay. right. You, you're welcome to change. You have another one if you like. But you're happy with yeah, that I'm one. Happy you're with comfortable that one. and mm -hmm. fantastic. All right. Um, Fifty-two different cards then. 52 different cards. I will make your card leap from the center of the deck and uh, reappear under the card box. <laughs> <laughs> right there on the table, the uh, nine of diamonds. A miracle. Again, point any way you like in the spread. Just point some with your finger any way you like. Uh, there. Watch. Yeah. So it go in from the middle of the deck. Gone and... Uh, Back under the box, right under your nose. Yeah. So good. Nine of diamonds. I know from experience I can't get away with this a third time because you're obviously going to watch the box in yeah, one day. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get rid of can, can I borrow your finger? Can you just put your finger yeah. down on the card? Yeah. Let me get rid of these and you won't be able to keep track of them. In fact, I'll put these in my inside pocket. And there we go. If you just put your hand flat on top of the. Uh, that's mm -hmm. perfect. It'll disappear from underneath your hand and reappear in my pocket underneath the box. I think it won't lift your hand for me. Ooh. Okay, technically that has actually gone. <laughs> what was your card? Uh, nine of diamonds. Yes, it's another nine of cards. <gasps> and in my pocket... Uh. Nope. Oh, back on the table, <laughs> under the box, the uh, no, nine of diamonds. No. Um, no. Oh, <laughs> no! Thank you so much. Hey. How exciting. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this trick sends me, man. I love card to box. I do it all the time. Card to glass, card to whatever's laying on the table. First and second phase are pretty standard. I mean, the second phase is nice after doing it once to do it again. Here's the fun challenge within this effect is that the more you do it, the more scrutiny and the more eyes are going to be on your hands because you're legit saying the card's going out of the box, the card's going out of the box. Now, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. 
you're burning this man's hands by the third part. There's like, there's no way the card's gonna be under the box. And so the nice subtlety here is, is that he says, I'll remove the box from play. So now you kind of let go of the notion of that, oh, this is a magician doing some other trick. This is not gonna be card under the box again, and it is. So it's such a well put together trick. Also, after the first card to box, the second one, I enjoy so much because there is such an off beat. And if you watch that video again, you can feel the moment of relaxation, which is exactly the moment the magician needs to prepare the next part of the trick. And that's what I really look for when I watch these clips is that when are the moves happening? Are they happening in plain sight? Are they happening under their nose? Or are they happening at this particular moment that he's engineered, a perfect moment for this move to happen. If this move happened at any other moment, he would have got caught. That's just wonderful. And obviously the third phase is just so great. That is card under box. If you were to ask me what my all time favorite card trick was, this next trick that I'm going to show you is it. This is one of the tricks that inspired me the most to wanting to fool people and learn how sleight of hand and misdirection works. This trick here. I don't think I've ever shared that on a video, but yeah, this, this is the one. There's so many beautiful moments in this routine that are so impossible. Let's have a look. It's called smoke. Uh, Sasuke, can I try something with you? Um, it's kind of a sort of a mind to mind thing. It may not work, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to spread the cards out. Ask you just to think of one card that you see. Uh, the best way of doing that, rather than trying to recreate the whole card in your mind, is just to see like if it, if it was a three of hearts, just like see a big three and a big heart, like that. So you just don't don't think of the three of hearts. No, I'm not trying to influence you, but none that, however, whatever card you see, just see it really clearly okay. like that in front of you. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll spread them think out. Think of a I'll card. Way so you don't think I can see where you you're see. Looking, which I can't. But can you get one? You got one? Yeah. All right. Don't change your mind now. You've got one. I won't touch these. I'll leave them there. Yeah. And as best as you can, just try and send me that that card. All right. Yeah. Just, just visualize it in your mind and just, and in your mind also, say it to yourself over and over again, like, you know, king of diamonds, king of diamonds, king of diamonds, whatever, over and over again, as if you, uh, and see it as well, like that, all right? Okay. Excellent. Try not to give it away. Try and keep a poker face. This is a bit of a guess. I'm just going to take a bit of a risk. Not the four of spades, is it? <laughs> is it the four of spades? Yeah. Is it the four of spades? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Do you uh, can you feel uh, can you feel yourself giving it away? No. <laughs> you should you should play. We'll have a game of poker later on. I think you'd be I think you'd be good. Do you know what's really freaky about that though? Do you know what's really kind of impressive about that? Is yeah. that there is no four of spades in that deck? Yeah, there is. There's still the four of spades. Mm -mm. There's a four of clubs, look. <laughs> four of clubs. And the four <laughs> spades is gone. <laughs> <coughs> One card, the... Uh, <coughs> oh, my God. Four of spades. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know why I like the four of spades so much. That trick is so beautiful from, there are certain holy grails that magicians chase when it comes to card magic. And think of a card is one of them because it's not name a card. This is a personal thought that's happening in your own head, right? So the next closest thing to that is think of a card you see instead of say it out loud again. So he spreads the cards and he says, think of a card you see, and she does so. Free choice, a free choice. She could have thought of any of these cards. She does think of one. He then guesses her card, but then the card without him ever touching the deck leaves the deck and the lit cigarette that he blew smoke from is now the card she thought of. This routine is the closest thing to like a perfect card trick in my honest opinion. That was smoke. The method for this, by the way, I'm not gonna share with you the method. Again, you wanna find it out, go figure it out for yourselves. But the method is so clever and so devious. It's so, it's a perfect method. You're not disappointed when finding out the method. I feel as a magician, when I found out, I was like, ooh, that is good. That was smoke. I learned this one. Uh, as yeah. well. Thank you so Put a much lot of practice time. into okay. this particular routine. Let me tell you how routine. I got started with all of this. Um, I was six years old and I saw a magician, a street magician, do something that nowadays we'd probably find a bit tacky, but at the time it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. 
And what he did was produced a rose for a lady. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have to do this. Um, and there was a girl at school I really liked, Debbie Boone. And uh, for about a month I practiced this, and I practiced and I practiced. Some of them told me that you had to pull it out of the sleeve. And then eventually after a month I plucked up the courage to go up to her in the playground and try this. And I produced the rose for her. And I completely messed it up. I, I cut myself and <laughs> pedals went everywhere, all over the floor. And she just she sort of laughed and, and went away. And I went and cried under the climbing frame. And that was it. Until after school and she came up to me and she picked up all the pedals and had them in her hand. And she gave me a kiss. Aww. And I thought, oh, well, that works. And that, that's how I got started. And <laughs> years later, I'm doing this. So, pick a card for me. Okay. Lovely intro to this trick. Uh, look at it. Remember what it is? Yeah. Put it back in for me. Marvellous. Thank you so much. Now, of course, bear in mind that at that age, um, I'm only six. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't have any of the knowledge of cards or magic skills or anything like that. I only have the imagination of a six-year-old. So uh -huh. watch. Look. Gone. <gasps> and back again. Uh -huh. One card. Although I think on reflection, probably not yours. No. Am I right? No, I think not. What about that one? Oh, that one? <laughs> <laughs> that one? No. That one? Mm, no. Nope. That one. Ah, maybe I'll stop there. I'll be honest, was yours card a six? Yeah. Was it the six of clubs? Yeah. Look. <gasps> oh! Pestle! Oh, that's lovely. Oh, thank you very <laughs> much indeed. Thank you. Can I give you a kiss now? Yes, no tons. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So, first of all, I like, you know, looking back at it, this this whole, this trick wasn't, it's not the greatest card trick. It's just pure sleight of hand, and that's what really, you know, made me want to learn this and practice it. This whole idea of having this card constantly uh, appearing. Let's just, I think it goes here, here, and here, and here. And here, and you can just keep doing this forever, which is a lot of fun. And that, I mean, me, I, I wanted to practice that. I wanted to learn that. Uh, but the road, let me just talk about when he gets into this trick. It's so nice seeing a card trick being set up with a story that seems heartfelt, that seems genuine. It's kind of nice because like he talks about how he wanted to impress this girl with magic, using a rose, there was petals everywhere, and then just doesn't say anything about the cards and just goes straight into a card trick. So at first it's a little bit off-putting, I feel, as a spectator, you're like, oh, well, thought you were gonna produce a rose or whatever. Now he leads you down this like, quirky, whimsical little hole that uh, you're following him through and you're kind of in this little fictional bubble. And then all of a sudden, poof, there are the pedals. And I thought that was a really nice way to bring everything back together. Is it cheesy? Yes. Is it corny? Yes. Did he still end up getting a kiss on the cheek? Yes. So at some level, she did enjoy uh, the story and the the routine and how it how it came together at the end. So yeah, just interesting. Because like, if you look at the card trick, the card trick really doesn't fit the story. Like just like whoop, whoop, plucking out cards for what reason. But again, when I saw this, I was like, whoa, you know, I need to learn that. By the way, if you guys want a good read, go check out either Confessions of a Conjurer or Tricks of the Mind, two novels that Darren put out and they're basically for everyone. So if you just want to learn about magic without like the technical magic -y stuff and hear some cool stories, definitely go check those out. They're fun. They're gr He's a great author. Uh, great, great books. This one's called, this next one's called Double Think. All right, let me, um, let me just try something with the two of you that may genuinely not work, but mm -hmm. just, just go with you. Don't try and catch me out. But on the other hand, try and keep a, a poker face and not give too much away. All right. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to riffle through this. I just want you to, get a card, so think of one, or stop me somewhere, or, so stop somewhere. Stop. Sure? That one? You happy? Yeah. Uh -huh. Remember what it is? Yeah. Just visualize that. Saskia, um, just, just think of one. Just think of a card. Visual, if you can sort of visualize Love that. it there, as if you can just sort of see it. Mm -hmm. You've got one? Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. I'll try this with the two of you. Yours actually is more difficult, because I can kind of predict the sort of card I think Saskia may go for. Please don't change your mind. Uh, Just think of a guy. That's so crazy. Three of hearts. What was the card? Uh, don't tell me. I'm, I can kind of change yours. 
Yeah. <laughs> I thought he'd be the. Uh, Maybe I'll, I'll, I'm going to kick myself if it was the other one. What was the card you were thinking of? Queen of Spades. Queen of Spades. Turn it over. Turn it over. The top card. Oh, no, this one there, oh. the Queen of Spades. Fantastic. And what was yours? Three, three of Hearts. Three of Hearts, which uh, was perfect. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Fantastic. You at home are watching this video and you saw the moment it happened. You saw that there was a move, but the move was invisible. Even though there was a move, you still feel like there was something going on. Uh, but the routine is so well structured. Like uh, the idea of just like think of a card is such a cool premise, you know, and Darren's really one to try and push that to the furthest. Like I'm going to pluck this idea from your mind. And, you know, he's been able to do that obviously with mentalism and hypnosis and all this stuff. Uh, but to do it with cards is really fun for me to see. That being said, the people in the room didn't see the move. To them, there was no move. To them, it was just impossible. And you can tell by their reactions. So just a really simple routine. Essentially, two thought of cards. Add a little bit of sleight of hand in there and you got yourself a miracle. Three card routine. Can I take yours back? Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And you too? And one there. You don't need to remember each other's, but remember your own ones. Okay. Right. Cool. Essentially, once these are lost in there, if you forget them and spoil the whole trick, you're going to get such a smack. So please remember what they are. All right? Now, be honest with me, Saskia, do you think it's uh, possible using some kind of superior psychological technique to make an object move all on its own? No. Okay, I'm going to concentrate on you. That's all right. <laughs> now, we'll try. Just think of your card, all right? Yeah. And watch what happens. If the spirits are with us, the deck will cut itself in the middle to one card. Can you see? Yeah. It's a regular Five deck, by the way. Magnets. Spirits have selected a card. I'll be honest with me. I gotta think this is yours, I think. Uh-huh. It's not yours, is it? Yours wasn't it's the king. It's not mine. But no. is that yours? The king of, mine, yeah. the king of hearts. Yeah. How bizarre. Excellent. Um, but let me try this with the, let me try this with Will you just rub? This should just rub the back of the card for me. Place your hand over it and just rub. Like that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Should have changed to the uh, Two That's yours, is that right? That's, right. That's yours. So good, dude. <laughs> yours isn't the two diamonds either. Do you want to try again? Rub it again. I appreciate you humouring me here. The, the, uh, the jack of hearts. <laughs> your cards. But I can't take any credit for this. I can show you. It's all, I'll stand up. It's all in the table. Look, if I rub the card, that's still the jack. I haven't changed it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Literally, I just rub it against this cloth. And it, it disappears. It's gone. Look, I'll bring it back. <laughs> Oh, that's genuinely gone. I don't know what <laughs> So yours was the, hang on, inside the pocket there, that'll be the, uh, the Jack of Hearts. Inside pocket here, the Two of Diamonds. And, uh, excuse me for a second. This is so good. The, uh, <laughs> card, the King of Hearts. I lost track. Who's, who's is who's there? Who's that's is who's? That's mine. That's mine. Fetch your fingers, no weird. Who's that's is who's? mine. That's mine. That's yours, and yours is the jack, and yours is the king. Okay, watch this. In the middle. All right. No extra fingers, no weird breaks or anything. That really does get lost in there. Would you say cut any way you like, or cut yours in there too? Cut. Sure. There. Got to yeah. stop. Carry on. Are you happy right there? There. Fantastic. And the king. The king was yours, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Look. Say so stop any way you like. <laughs> say cut. I'll cut it in. Stop. There, sure. Fantastic. The two of diamonds. Superb. Right. Three cards lost back in the places that you decided on yourselves. There's clearly another magician in the world who could find them now. <coughs> it's not true. Uh, watch. Mm -hmm. So if you find it yourself, it's so much more impressive. Well, what we? You say stop and Oh, I see. Okay. Stop. Sure. Take the next one. Have a look. Is that it? <laughs> a miracle! The uh, Jack of Hearts, and the yours was the King of Hearts. I'm going to spell to it one card for each letter. I'll spell King of Hearts. Watch. K-I-N-G. King. O-F of H-E-A-R-T-S. <laughs> wow! Stop me any way you like. And uh, yours was the... Two of Diamonds. Two of Diamonds. You can give me any number you like between one and... Fifteen. I'll count down that number. It'll be at the number that you say. If you shuffle them first, it's even more impressive. So give them a, 
Nixon, give me any number you like. This is so Nixon. good. Four God. Scene. This may not work. I haven't seen this in years. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> one stopped at, one spelt to, one at number 14. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Saskia, do you want to turn over that last one for me? See, I think I'm shooting. The, uh, that move diamonds, at perfect. the end is so good. And the King of Diamonds. King of Hearts. Do you gamble at all? Do any of you gamble? No. no. Do you gamble, Stuart? No. You don't. Do you know the old three card find the lady trick? Normally done with a queen mm -hmm. and two other cards. Yeah. Now we don't have a queen here, uh, despite the fob mm -hmm. watch and white scope, but we've got uh, two picture cards and a non picture card. So if I mix these up, you touch the one that you think is the non picture card, the two. All right. I will cheat, you're going to get it wrong. So here's what they do they swap the card. Can you see? That's a two, but it's the wrong two, it's now the two of clubs. Mm -hmm. I'll do that again. That'll be the uh, two of space. Now, at full speed, you just don't even register they touch the deck. You see, did you see exactly where those three cards went? No. It's a little no. difficult to follow. They're under the card case just there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the, uh, the two and the jack and the, and the king. It's good, isn't it? The really freaky thing is the second time. Would you catch me if I did that again? <laughs> no! <laughs> the same three cards. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how this is done, sadly. Um, all I can do is uh, give you a very fair chance to catch me out, all right? So, you're closer, so watch very carefully. I'll put that there, I won't go anywhere, anywhere near it. All right. Uh, we'll put these back in. Sassy, just stop me anywhere you like. Stop. Fantastic. Uh, Stuart, anywhere you like. Stop. Ooh, okay. And, uh, anywhere you like. Let's see. Stop. Perfect. <laughs> now, the last card would appear a little unfair to the inattentive eyes of the layman, so I will cut the deck, thus losing all three cards completely. All right? mm -hmm. Now, do check this is a fair card, because I could cheat. Uh, this is an ace of clubs on the top of the deck at the moment. So, are you happy this is a fair card? Yes? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, clearly not. If it's still the ace of clubs on the top, that can't be a oh. real card. This is a gambler's move. <laughs> it's a no. false card. No, it looks like I'm cutting the deck. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, it but does. I'm not really. If you yeah. think about it, it's only a real cut if you take the top half and place it underneath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Back under the box when you're not watching. In order to do this, I will need to. He even says it's going to be back under the box. Your attention. Now, basically, while you're watching the one hand, you miss what's going on in the other, and you think you'd never, you'd never fall for that, but uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Especially when you've had a bit of string. So, here we go. Back under the box. Uh, He's just showing off at this oh. point, just flourishing. They're not there. They're not, trust me. Not under the box. So I'm cheating. I'm using invisible cards that you can't see. <laughs> but if you reach inside the box and have a look, Stuart, mm -hmm. reach in. Take oh. <laughs> so no, it makes no sense. <laughs> There's a lot going on in that routine, obviously. This is uh, probably like his close-up set that he's worked on for years uh, at dinner tables, at restaurants, at functions, whatever it, whatever it may be. Um, because you can tell because there's a lot of like magic-y patter there. A lot of like, uh, oh, well, if you had too much to drink. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And, uh, you know, magicians get into that sort of patter flow state when you're performing surrounded because you're the one who has to be snappy, witty, and, and, and say everything right and control the room and make sure all eyes are in the right place. So uh, it's fun to get to see what his close-up routine would have looked like uh, back when he was maybe hopping tables. Obviously, a ton of sleight of hand going on there and just some really nice moves. So if you watch that back again, there's some really, really nice moves. Like Darren Brown has chops. This man has chops. He can absolutely cut it with the best of them when it comes to card magic. Uh, and it's so interesting because most, when he went from doing card magic to mentalism and hypnosis like he remembers full well like if i could actually do the things that i'm talking about i wouldn't need a deck of cards what would that look like and then he transitioned into what he's doing today and what i think he's best at what i think he's just conquered he is the greatest showman of our era and uh, it's just so cool to see, you know, his humble beginnings are like what I achieved to be, which is 
kind of insane when you think about it. He's a very talented person, uh, individual. I highly recommend you go check him out. Uh, that's going to be enough video watching for today. Guys, if you enjoy this type of content, again, hit the like button. If you want to see more Darren Brown videos, uh, 15K likes, and we'll do another one. Remember, Wednesday, first dot shop at noon p.m. Eastern time, we launch the first edition Bicycle Rider Backs. See you then. We'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, peace out. Bye.